Yeah, hi, good morning. This morning I would like to talk about a big question that a lot of investors ask, which is, you know, we get a lot of people looking at our properties and <clears throat> a very common, um, uh, not quote, but a very common thing that we hear is, you know, Mike, it's, it seems too good to be true. Um, the returns are too high. The prices are too low. How is this? How is this possible? And I think it's all to do with, you know, what sort of risks are involved in in buying a property. And I think, like like any investment, that there, there, there's no investment, whether it's the stock market, the S and P five hundred, um, uh, flipping houses. There's no investment without risk. So I think you have to accept as as an investor, uh, you have to accept that there is some risks and, and you have to understand when you buy a property, what those risks are. So like I've worked in property for coming up to 30 years now. And I think th there's two main risks involved in, in buying a property. And I think the two main risks are number one, maintenance and number two, vacancy. And I think Good investment is about minimizing those risks. And, and so how do we do that? How do you minimize maintenance? How do we, how do we minimize vacancy? So let, let, let me talk about that. Let's take the first one. Let's take vacancy, for example. So how do we minimize vacancy? Well, I think tenants are always gonna leave. You're never gonna have the same tenant for 20 years or for the whole time that you own the property. It's never gonna happen. So tenants leave. So let's think about it. If a tenant leaves, number one, if you've got a good management company in place, which we work with some great management companies in Cleveland and Detroit, if you've got a good management company in, pl in place, they should be able to place a tenant. But if the location is not good, then it might be more difficult for them to place a tenant. So I think the way to minimize vacancy is by a property in a good location. So I think the location, like any property purchase, is essential. And I think it's the number one factor that you have to look at when, when buying a property, whether it's in America, the UK, Turkey, Cyprus, South America, I think it's the number one factor that you need to look at. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's how we minimize vacancy. You look at a good, location because if you buy a property which is in a, a not so great location it's going to be harder for the the management company to place a tenant so i think that's that's how we minimize vacancy the second one maintenance is a little bit trickier i think because and and it comes down to location as well but i think like as a company we sell different types of properties. We sell properties uh, that, are, that have tenants in place, that are rent ready. Um, we sell some properties that need a lot of work and that will be done after the, the client closes on the property. We sell properties that are fully renovated in fantastic condition. Um, so I think you need to look at, uh, again, I think it's how adverse you are to risk and I think that you need to look at, you know, if you're gonna buy a house and, and it's cheap, but it's cheap because it, it's it's just in, in rent ready condition, I think you have to accept that at some point you would, you would need to spend some money on it. And obviously if you need to spend money on a property, then it's gonna eat into any potential return. The same as vacancy vacancy is going to eat into, if you've got a vacant period in it, on a property, you need to try and minimize it. So, so any, any type of vacancy is going to eat into a return as well. So like maintenance, if you buy a property from us and it's fully renovated, you'd expect for the first three, four, five years, you wouldn't have much vacancy. I'm sorry, not vacancy, you wouldn't have much maintenance, you wouldn't have much much money to spend on the property. Whereas if you buy a property with, let's say, for example, tenants in place and 
it's just rent ready then and let's say the tenants leave you might need to spend some money on the property so again that would eat into any potential return so that is a potential risk on what is going to stop my cash flow what is going to stop my return but on the other side of the coin if you buy a property that is cheap and you spend money on it what are you doing here you're adding value to the property as well so so even though you are spending money and it's eating into a return you're increasing the value of the property if you fully renovate a property it's going to be worth a lot more than what you paid for it so i think that's what uh, as an investor we have to accept and i think a lot of people don't get that they think that oh we have got to spend money on the property but the bottom line is you're adding value to your investment and when it comes to resale it will be worth more money. So I don't think we should be afraid of that or scared of that. And I think we have to accept it as an investor that that is one of the risks involved in buying a property. At some point in the future, you're gonna to have to spend money on that property. So, so I think that's how we minimize vacancy. We look for a property that is in good condition. But then again, uh, it can be kind of contradictory because I was listening to a podcast last week um, from, from a guy in the US that buys houses, buys and sells houses and flips houses. And, and he, he said, there was a quote in it and it rang true with me and, and it said, you buy the worst house in the best location. So that kind of, it, it, it puts a different picture on, on the situation because I think if you find a great house in an amazing location but it needs a lot of work it could still be a great investment so i think again it depends on what your requirements are as an investor what you're looking for if you're looking for solid cash flow um then i'll be recommending you buy a property that's fully renovated in great condition in a good look in a good location and it's going to be very hands-off but if you're looking for maybe a little bit of growth you don't mind doing a little bit of work on the property, then maybe look at properties that are in a in a really good location, but might need a little bit of work. So again, it's about it's about your requirements. But I think you know even even with these risks, so even with vacancy, with maintenance, I still think you have to look at the fact that you're buying an asset. So it's an asset backed investment, and regardless of of whether you get a little bit of vacancy or you get a you have to spend a few thousand dollars on the property to paint it if a tenant leaves i think the bottom line is you have an asset and that asset is going to grow over time the history tells us that that property over long periods of time will go up so so your property will rise in value so i think those are the two risks involved and i think my advice to any investor that is looking at buying into any buy to let market, whether it's the US or the UK, I think a good gauge. So if you said to me, Mike, you know, really, you know, you're, you're advertising 18%, 20% net returns, but that doesn't factor in vacancy or maintenance and it, and it doesn't. So I think as an investor, you have to factor in those things, but we can't, I, we, we can't put that into our calculations because it depends on the property. We can't say how much vacancy is gonna be or how much maintenance is gonna be because it depends on the individual property. Is it renovated, uh, what location it's in? Because all of those factors would decide on how much vacancy it's gonna be or how much money you have to spend on the property. So it's very difficult, but I think as a good gauge, I would recommend that if you see a property that's advertised at let's say 18, 19, 20%, my advice, take off four or 5% off that. So if it's 20%, look at 15% net and give yourself a 5% buffer for some form of vacancy, some form of maintenance. Now, you might find that for the first one or two years there's nothing and you don't but but I, th I think as an investor you have to look at the risks involved and you have to take these things into account um but even then if you've got a 
uh, uh, buy a house, a duplex, a single family home with an 18% return and you take off four or 5%, 13% net is still a very healthy return that you would struggle to get probably anywhere else um, right now. Like for example, the UK market would be sick, anything between six to 9%. So 13 or 14% is still a very healthy return after you take into account the risks involved. So I think that would be my advice in terms of the risks involved. And I think the bottom line is, if you have money in a bank or anywhere sat, not working for you, even with these potential risks, your money is going to work far better for you in an asset backed investment like a property. So regardless of, of, of the risks involved, your money, it's how your money is working for you. And without a doubt, your money is gonna work better for you in property. So I hope that helps anyway. And as always, you can see our latest inventory on our website. Our best selling markets right now would be Cleveland, Detroit. Um, potentially we're looking at some new markets next year. So um, I hope, that you, I hope the, the, the video helps and anything else, uh, you can touch base with us. All right, thanks.